course we don't. And, and so the parents know that it's really important because I don't use real weapons. Yeah. There's no need for that. Yeah. Um, you know, we have uh, rubberized knives and, you know, wooden swords. And, you know, the stuff that you see hanging on our wall is a prop. Yeah. For, if, for a better lack of, of a term. Now, there are some real ones that are out there. I've got a couple that I keep at home. But the big thing is is that we want to be as safe as possible. Yeah. And safety is a big thing because when you're shopping around for a school, you want to go in there and make sure that your instructors, these instructors, and the person that's going to be teaching your son or daughter is not teaching inappropriate inappropriate uh, techniques. Mm -hmm. And the big thing for us is is that we try to make sure that we match maturity with skill and also with their ability. And at some point, you know, you have to realize that teaching a 10-year-old child uh, a certain level of self-defense is probably not appropriate. Yeah. And especially when it comes to the possibility that they can injure another child because, honestly, they go out in the backyard and say, hey, watch what I can do. I did that as a kid. And um, that's when the fun begins because usually your next-door neighbor comes over and says, well, how did my son end up with a big black eye? Yeah. <laughs> uh, good times. Okay. So um, let's, let's kind of switch gears a little bit here. Okay. What are some common nutrition issues? Because you guys know I'm a dietitian, so I got to ask. What are some common nutrition issues you see with some of your students, some of the other martial artists? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, throughout my, I guess you could say, career in martial arts, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. And um, let's talk about all three. Yeah, we will. And <laughs> and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use names because um, I, I don't think that's appropriate. No. But um, a lot of times, what you'll find is is that some of the people within the martial arts community don't take their health as seriously as some of their their students do and a lot of that can be uh, time related sure yeah this is a business that that requires a great deal of effort uh, a great deal of uh, physical ability and so what happens is, is those of us that are instructors unfortunately over time we don't get the same ability to work out as other people do you talked about getting burnt out too from mm -hmm. teaching so many classes I mean it burned out and then just the repetitiveness of anything you know you can get repetitive injuries through that but on the nutrition side, part of what I see is, is that, and, and this is in general, people are in a hurry. Sure. So uh, I, I still remember, and this has been quite a few years ago, there's a friend of mine who's a doctor. Mm -hmm. And um, to all you doctors, we, we know that you have poor handwriting, and you <laughs> want to tell us that we all need to eat well, but I've seen there's proof that you don't. Sure. Uh, he was outside of, of class right before one of our advanced classes, and he and his wife and his son and his daughter were uh, doing justice to a bag of McDonald's food right before class. And I said to him, that's not healthy. And he said, well, I don't have any time. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, unfortunately, that's the way life is nowadays. People yeah. don't have time for good nutrition when they really do. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of options out there. I mean, you can go to, to sandwich places. You can, uh, you know, prepare a little bit where you can bring the food with you. Yeah. So well, from the nutrition side, what I see is, is that, unfortunately, People are their own worst enemy, and you know that as a nutritionist and, and also as a fitness expert. It's very difficult to try to convince somebody that uh, that five-minute hamburger is uh, is not good for them mm -hmm. when they can just simply prepare the food at home. Yeah. The uh, on the martial arts side, what I find is is that the people that, that do take time, they do take a little bit of effort, mm -hmm. and, and they do take care of themselves, are the ones that last longer. Mm -hmm. uh, they can, uh, and when I say last longer, in other words, they can uh, perform at a higher level. They can go much longer in the classes because they better feel. That's true, and and you know, what goes in comes out. And so when you garbage in, garbage out, you get the end result is is you're not going to perform as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big factor too, especially when you start getting into higher level martial arts, where for instance we used to have a uh, an hour long advanced class that was probably as intense as anything I've ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. um, there was a consistent non-stop for 45 minutes beyond um, doing self-defense routines. Wow. That, uh, that probably averaging heart rate probably in the 160s, which is really high. And, and I'd say the average age of the people in the room were somewhere around um, early 40s to late, to late 40s, okay. which, is a, which is a really good, good proof that, that, that you can at that age can still perform quite well. Yeah. But I guarantee you that the vast majority of people in there had a fairly healthy healthy lifestyle. Okay, so what comes in comes out, especially in the uh, martial arts classes. And, you know, you said that time or, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, convenience is a really big thing 
even in the self-discipline nature of martial mm -hmm. artists, I mean, are still going to be subjected to the, the same sort of things. You talked about this earlier. You know, you got your kids signed up for, you know, karate, for Girl Scouts, for, uh, you know, band lessons and all that kind of stuff. You got to find some time to eat in between there, and it's all a matter of priorities. Are you going to make it a priority for you and, and get that excellent uh, output in your classes, or are you going to eat a bag of McDonald's before class? Which, you know, there's some healthy choices at McDonald's, but, you know, they sell cheeseburgers number one on the menu for a reason. So uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you talked about injuries. What are some common injuries you see in martial arts? Interesting enough, most of the injuries are, are real minor. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, maybe a, a sprain or a torn, torn muscle or, or just a overuse. In other words, you've, we do a lot of repetitive motions, obviously, mm -hmm. punching and kicking. So that's that's primarily what you see the worst pulled muscles. Um, now the the any of the more extreme injuries that we've seen are not due to what we teach. Mm -hmm. uh, it could have been uh, because somebody uh, was thrown improperly okay. and they weren't prepared for it. Uh, they were injured uh, in a in a tournament situation, which again that may be outside of, of, of their um, their responsibility, it might have been from someone else, or that they've done something that. Um, that is not really related to martial arts because in general martial arts in and itself you see very few injuries even though there's a great great uh, deal of conflict uh, between opponents in a sparring situation you don't really see that level of injuries uh, for myself I've most of anything that I've done is has been re-injuring something that I had injured a long time in the past that had nothing to do with martial arts okay and so what, and that's what we find. For the kids, you very rarely ever see a child get injured. Uh, the adults, you know, we, can, we seem to be able to hurt ourselves, whether it's a pulled muscle, whether uh, we uh, twist an ankle or something like that. But a lot of that has less to do with actually the practice of martial arts yeah. and more to do with the fact that maybe some of us, when we do it, are trying to push too hard. Uh, we're, Happens. We're trying to recreate our youth, which is, uh, it has to do with our, with our, our ego a little bit because we think we can do something. Uh, that we're not capable of yet, and that's a real uh, a problem with some of the adults. I, I know uh, my own wife recently uh, pulled a muscle mm. uh, in her leg, and you know she fully admitted. She said, "You know, I was just pushing it too hard, and yeah. I, I shouldn't have been trying to keep up with the kids." Uh, and you know that's the thing too is is it realize what you're what you're doing. You know, it's for your health, it's for your benefit. You're not trying to become the uh, the next Bruce Lee. Yeah. You're not trying to become the next Jet Lee, uh, and that's for somebody that maybe that's a little bit younger in their late teens, early twenties. And give them the opportunity. But when you're in your 30s, late 30s and 40s, you know, um, when we've already accumulated injuries outside of that from playing golf and baseball and soccer and all those yeah. things that we played in our youth, hey, come on, give yourself a break. Yeah. yeah. The other person you should compare yourself to is the person you were yesterday. You know, quit looking at the next door neighbor and all that stuff and all that. So a lot of times when people injure themselves, it's because they're just pushing themselves too hard mm -hmm. and maybe practicing outside of the realm of, of what you've been teaching them. Uh, you know, one, one thing I tell the people is there is an inherent risk with exercise. You know, you may step out on that mat and roll an ankle or something like that, and but there's also an even bigger risk with being sedentary. I mean, if you're sitting on the couch all day long, you get up and you throw out your back. Would you rather throw out your back from being sedentary or would you rather maybe like pull a leg muscle and be able to bounce back from it because you're being physically active? Uh, just something to consider there at home. Uh, how do you think a martial artist could benefit from working with a personal trainer? Well, martial arts in and itself is is almost a, a, a cross training exercise. Mm -hmm. I think when it when it comes to working with a personal trainer, uh, the you're almost your own personal trainer when it comes to martial arts. And I think the benefits uh, with working a personal trainer, especially with within any um, exercise program, is is that they can they can pinpoint the needed exercises for what it is that you're doing. Like imbalances. Very, very targeted things. Um, the balance is going to come more from the martial arts, but okay. from, from my perspective, because I, I've done personal training uh, in my youth, targeting the muscle groups, that's a, that's a, a big thing. So and like a sport specific. Yeah, sport specific because we do, you do use a lot of uh, leg muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, your upper body strength is not, not as big a requirement as it would be in some of the other physical sports, but it's not something you should neglect. Um, and the other thing is, is lifting heavy weights is probably not something you want to do. Uh, you want to be able to keep, uh, 
to keep a, a good muscle mass, but at the same time, you want to be able to keep that flexibility. Yeah. And that's a that's and strength a training can if you don't stay on top of your stretching mm -hmm. can. Uh, you can lose a little bit of flexibility. Sometimes you know it, it really depends. It depends on, on the, again and, and again what you're trying to do is target exercise. So what's what's really going to be the benefit mm -hmm. uh, that you get from strength training with uh, with martial arts? And since I did that, you know, for a long time, I, I that was my cross training, which is mm -hmm. going in and doing whether it be aerobics by running, whether it be weightlifting for strength. And so by being able to cross over into those two areas, it was really important because what it did is it helped me maintain not only my health but also my uh, my physical ability to be able to, to practice. And you guys do a lot of calisthenics anyway, a lot of mm -hmm. push-ups, sit-ups, and that sort of stuff. So yes. Uh, a lot of that is uh, kind of crossing in between. All right, let's, uh, let's kind of switch gears here one last time. What was one of the most meaningful experiences you've had as an instructor? I'm sure you've had a lot. Maybe you could share one or two with us. I think when it comes to being an instructor and a master, I think the most meaningful things are being able to put a belt around a child who you thought would never, ever get there. Yeah. And, you know, we're not trying to be critical. We all have limitations in our life. Oh, sure. I mean, I've, I've had clients where I'm like, oh, man, like, yeah. let's make it past day one and then yeah. 50 pounds later. Exactly. And, it, and, I, and I think what you see as an instructor and, 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 and at my level as a master, you see people that for no other reason excelling because you've given them the opportunity. Mm -hmm. and unlike a lot of traditional sports where you don't see, you always see the, the most athletically gifted that they're going to put out there on the field yeah, the first or on the court. And unfortunately, it, it, those people may not necessarily make the best martial arts. Mm -hmm. But when you have a child who has a lot of different uh, problems, uh, a good friend of mine had uh, severe asthma. Mm -hmm. They told him that he'd never be able to exercise. Yeah, he's testing for seventh degree this weekend. Uh, we had another child that, when I started many years ago, all of us thought there was no way that he was even going to get to to his first belt. Mm -hmm. And the last time I saw him before he went off to college, he was a third degree black belt wow. and probably one of the most skilled that we had in the school at the time. Wow. So there's no reason to give up. Uh, in fact, uh, it's part of what we, we try to tell kids is never give up, no matter what it is. If you have a goal, shoot for it. In fact, if you have a goal, try to put that out so far and keep moving the goal because once you attain something, set a new goal. Set a new goal. Yeah. And, and that's the biggest thing as an instructor, and this is what I tell them, your mind will fool you into believing that you can't do something or oh, you can't accomplish something. I agree. And, you know, we're not talking about somebody who weighs 99 pounds soaking wet and that they're, they're going to lift 2,000 pounds. Yeah. You know, that's maybe that's a goal too far, but that doesn't mean that someday they may not be able to do that. Yeah. And when we have kids that have ADHD and, and uh, mild forms of autism mm -hmm. that have physical limitations or are just not uh, the most int – they're, they're introverted, they're not the most athletically gifted, you know what? They're the ones that we get in martial arts schools. And they're the ones that benefit the most because in the end we find out that they're no different than anybody else. They end up being honor society kids. They end up being not only good kids but gifted martial artists because they're trying harder than somebody who comes in who has natural ability and just stands on the floor and says, I can do this. Well, if you can do it, then prove it. Yeah. And that's the big thing. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your money where your mouth is because <laughs> you get what you put in. And those kids work really hard because they know – in order to be able to get better, they want to do better. And they want to do better because when I sit up there as an instructor and mm -hmm. encourage them, the biggest thrill I get is seeing the smile mm -hmm. on their face that when you wrap that belt around them. Yeah. And I've put quite a few black belts around kids and some adults, and the ones that really, really have the biggest smile are those kids. Wow. The adults feel really good about themselves, yeah. but the kids really find that they've accomplished something that a lot, a lot of people have. Wow. I mean, that really just takes people through a journey and I, I can relate a lot of ways with you talk about setting the goals and how I mean when, when a child has a goal you know to maybe be like a, a great athlete or to uh, even just be above average there's so many people in that child's life tell them that they can't do that you know mm -hmm. you, you have the teachers and the coaches that you know and and their peers and you know we're all our own worst critic too uh, to be able to work with a, a teacher like you that you know actually gives somebody a chance I mean, sometimes that's all people need. 
Uh, Guy, what's it like for a new student to work with you? Well, as a new student, it's probably, and again, a lot of new students, because of the rank, mm -hmm. they get a little bit intimidated. And, and so the first thing I try to do is try to put them at ease. And there's a lot of different ways, and all of us have our different techniques of doing that. Um, and I think the biggest thing is, is that what they're going to find is, is that one, we're not intimidating. Um, two, we're we're at a level that we've seen so many different things happen that um, it's really it, it shouldn't be scary. You should come in and say, "Hey, I'm going to have a lot of fun," because you don't get the opportunity to work with somebody who's at the level that I'm at or that other people are at. When you're at a when you walk into a school and you have a master who's training you, that should be just you, you should be so thankful that you found some place that can do that because yeah. that's an opportunity that doesn't come along very often. And I'm not boasting. What I'm saying is is that when I started, I didn't have that. Um, I found it later on, not only one but two. And so my opportunity as an adult to have found that, I can't imagine, you know, that that's, it was a great thing. Oh, yeah. But as, a ch but as a child coming in and you can walk in and say, hey, you know what, I got to train with a master, and and your, your friends go, really, you know, uh, that's great because they look at that and everybody recognizes, hey, a master. I mean, we've all seen the different movies. And so, you know, uh, in it, in, in, without trying to be um, cartoonish, yeah. you know, the, usually the masters are people that do have a lot of humility. Mm -hmm. they, they've gotten somewhere in life and, you know, they, they don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yeah. And so when a child comes in, this, and, and, and I do a lot of the intros mm -hmm. and, uh, and I also do a lot of the privates. And so I really, the first thing I do is try to put them at ease. Yeah. Give them the, the ability to be able to feel comfortable. And I had one of the kids the other day, um, she wasn't having a good day. Mm. And so what I did is I said, you know what, you're going to come up and you're going to stand next to me the whole class. And by the end of that class, she had the biggest smile on her face. And it wasn't because I did something truly unique. It was because I gave her an opportunity that, you know, everybody was said, okay, just stand there. You know, if you don't feel very good today or you're not having a good day, well, you know what, we'll just see what happens. No, you know, you want to try to bring the best out in people. Yeah. And so that's the uniqueness of being a master, which is that I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. I've seen people at their worst. I've seen people at their best. And you try to be able to put them at ease because they feel somewhat intimidated to be able to come in and, and, and train with you. And so what they need to realize is it's just the opposite. Yeah. Because I have nothing to prove. And so what I'm trying to do is pull the best out of them. Yeah, he, he's already paid his dues. You know, guy, guys here, not, he's not tooting his own horn. I asked him, you know, about you know, what it takes to be, uh, you know, what he does and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I can totally relate as somebody who got started off in, you know, fitness and all that stuff. A lot of it was I'm reading articles on the Internet. I'm trying to get in shape. And if I would have had the opportunity to work with, you know, like the trainers that we have here and start off by that, I'd be, I'd be light years ahead of where I was rather than kind of, you know, fooling around uh, uh, doing something like that. You know, when you, we've got an opportunity to work with somebody who has all that experience, I call that the Cadillac ride. You know, do you want to uh, trek through the forest barefoot or do you want to take the Cadillac ride to your destination? Not saying that it's easy, but you have the map laid out for you, you have the experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there, there's a lot that comes with science, but there's also a lot that comes with experience as well. And when you can combine those two together, you really have... Um, a great opportunity. Guy, let's wrap this up. How can somebody who's interested in Unwall get in touch with you? You have a website? Our, our website is uh, AmericanUnwall.com. Okay, I'm going to link that down below, so guys, click on that, check that out, and uh, read up on Guy. Also, I'm going to post this on my website on Food and Fitness, which you, which you guys can uh, check out down there below. Uh, if you guys, if you like this video, give us a like. Uh, if you have any comments, leave us a comment down below in the comment box. We'd love to hear from you, see what we have to say. Guy, before we leave today, uh, I'd like to open it up and say, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to leave us with? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Tony for the opportunity to come in. And, you know, you can, you can go through Food and Fitness to get to us, or you can, you can link to our website because we do have a link on there. Yeah, we, uh, do. Sure. We, do, uh, we do try to, to work with one another because we're in that same type of business, which is helping, uh, helping everybody stay healthy. Yeah. and hopefully stay young. Uh, the final thoughts are is, you know what, never give up. Whatever it is your dreams are, whether it's to play a piano or to become a black belt, you're never too, you're never too old, and you're certainly, whether, whether or not you have the, whether you believe you have the skill or not, don't give up. There's no reason for it because, honestly, 
Um, whether it be uh, somebody who's involved in fitness, whether you're the uh, weekend warrior playing softball, uh, whether you're somebody who's just trying to get themselves in shape, there's always somebody that can help you, uh, like Tony with the food and fitness or with our school, American Unilaw. Guy, really appreciate you coming on today. This is Master Guy with American Unilaw. Once again, check out his website down below. Appreciate you coming in. Thanks, Tony. And Thank you very much. And hope to do it again sometime. Thanks.